All right, good evening. Greet each of you in Jesus' name again this evening. Maybe we should just move the mic back instead of you all moving front. You'd probably be more compact that way anyway. All right, the last two nights we talked about um, worship and fellowship. And, and tonight we have ministry. Um, ministry as in a purpose of the church ministry. Um, and it, it ties pretty closely to evangelism. Um, because ministry is often a tool we use for evangelism. Um, so we're going to try to separate the two, though, um, and talk about evangelism tomorrow night. Evangelism being more specifically um, sharing the gospel with others and ministry um, being more um, I would say physical needs, but it's not just physical. Um, but we'll get, get your ideas on, on your thoughts of ministry here in just a little bit. Uh, as, as we look at these different purposes, you'll, you, um, you might notice that some of them uh, you are better at or, or they come a little easier for you. And different people excel at different ones of these. Um, some of them you might have to work a little harder, and uh, some of them might be more your thing. Um, I Ministry is probably one of the ones that I'm personally, I don't know, it's kind of hard to pick one, I guess, but it, it might be, if there's one that I am a little more passionate about, it might, it might be ministry, or the one that I find a little easier, um, and I know that's probably not for everyone. Um, so just starting off, when, when, we're, when we say ministry, what comes to your mind? Uh, just like we did the other nights, what are, what are some things, what do you think of when you think of ministry? It can be, what was that? Serving, all right. Serving. That's a huge part of it. Right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right. Right. Yeah, that's correct. That that would be a a um, one of the practical applications of minis ministry would be a minister, and that's where the word came from to begin with, I suppose. Anything else? Uh, the thing that came to my mind first was sacrifice, which is, goes right along with serving. Um, time, resources, a lot of things. Uh, just reflecting, I had to think of, uh, we, when we moved into Lebanon City, um, we moved there to be able to minister better uh, to the children from the Bible study that we were part of. We were having uh, once a week classes with, I don't remember exactly how many at, at, when we moved in there. I think it was getting close to 150. Um, every week, but then you would go back to your own place 30 minutes away in the country. Um, and it felt like we just thought there might be more opportunity to minister to them directly if we lived there. So we um, talked and prayed about it. And uh, some people say that it would never be for them. We sold our horses, our goats, our sheep. I forget what all we had. Um, and moved into town. And, and I love living there. And I... I, can, I think I can truly say that I, I haven't hardly regretted it. Um, a 
Although there is, there's days that uh, my flesh would love to, to move back in the country and get away from the people. Uh, because ministering is it's a draining work. And we found lots of opportunity to minister. Maybe not even in the way we thought it was going to be. but um, And that, that ties into last night a little bit. That's, that's one of the reasons that our family um, finds fellowship really vital. Um, it's because of how, how um, draining it can be to, to minister, and you can gain a lot of um, encouragement, refreshment from, from your fellow believers. If there was anyone who lived the ultimate example of ministry, it was Jesus. Um, when you read the, about his life, his, his life just was ministry. Um, just off the top of your mind, are, are there any, what are, what are some instances that in Jesus' life that come to mind that would be an example of, of ministry? I mean, you can probably name almost anything he did, but just to hear you talk. All right. We talk by the Sea of Galilee. The woman at the well. Feeding the five thousand. Good. All right, taking time for the children, blessing them. And there's, there's just countless. I mean, everything he did. Um, lots of healing acts that were... Lots of... Um, yeah, everywhere he went there was people and they were always taking his time. To the point that he tried to get away some, and we'll talk about that a little later. I'm going to read some from Matthew 25. This isn't specifically... Well, you, we'll read that. Matthew 25, 31 to 46. Yeah. 31 to 46. In my Bible, this is labeled Judgment of the Gentiles. Starting verse 31, when the Son of Man shall come in his glory and all the holy angels with him, then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory, and before him shall be gathered all nations, and he shall separate them one from another, as a shepherd divideth his sheep from the goats. And he shall set the sheep on the right hand, but the goats on the left. Then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, Come, ye blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungered, and ye gave me meat. I was thirsty, and ye gave me drink. I was a stranger, and you took me in, naked, and ye clothed me. I was sick, and ye visited me. I was in prison, and ye came unto me. Then shall the righteous answer him, saying, Lord, when saw we thee, and hungered, and fed thee, or thirsty, and gave thee drink? When saw we thee, a stranger, and took thee in, or naked, and clothed thee? And when saw we thee, sick, or in prison, and came unto thee? And the king shall answer, and say unto them, Verily I say unto you, Inasmuch as we have done it unto one of the least of these, my brethren, well, ye have done it unto me. Then shall he say also unto them on the left hand, Depart from me, ye cursed, into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was in hunger, and ye gave me no meat. I was thirsty, ye gave me no drink. I was a stranger, and ye took me not in. Naked, and ye clothed me not. Sick, and in prison, and ye visited me not. Then shall they also answer him, saying, Lord, when saw we thee, and hungered, and thirst, or a stranger, or naked, or sick, or in prison, and did not minister unto thee? Then shall he answer them, saying, Verily I say unto you, Inasmuch as ye did it not to one of the least of these, ye did it not to me. And these shall go away into everlasting punishment, but the righteous into life eternal. So here we see a little picture 
um, of some aspects of ministry. And who, who is this talking about? Who are we ministering to? In these, at least in these verses. What's that? The least of these. The least of the, how, do, how, how do you determine? Is that, um, I guess, who is that today? Who's the least of these? Is this specifically talking about, um, are these people in the church, or is this like people in general? Surely you have ideas of what you always thought it meant. <laughs> I don't know that. I don't have a right answer. I'm just asking what you, what you think. <laughs> People in general? All right. Anyone else? Um. What's that? It could be a struggling brother. That's correct. It could be. Um, pretty much, it, it names a lot of the, the main um, necessities, if you were. So it, it's needy, needy people. And I, it, it, it didn't it isn't, um, I don't believe it's contained to just food, clothing, and drink. I have to think of this verse a lot. I, um, there's a, a little boy that lives near us. Um, and if his house is the least, if there's any house that's the least of these, it's, it's, a, it's quite, a, quite a household. Um, he lives with his grandparents because his his mom is in, in jail, um, and his uncles that live with him, I, I would say I probably am being generous to say that they OD once a month. Um, and he, he comes up to our place quite a bit. Actually, he's, um, if you think about the most, I shouldn't say it quite like that, but think of an annoying child, you know, he's probably that or worse. He's He's probably, eight or, I think, eight or nine. He's never been to school yet. Um, can, he can barely talk right. Um, but he's, he's not, uh, he's normal. He just, he's as untrained as they come. Um, the neighbors have called child services on them. At least one neighbor called at least six times. So, you know, the, the kind of situation. Anyway, he often comes and knocks on the door and he asks for a drink because he's thirsty. Um, and I don't, this, these verses... I think of them almost every time. Um, and there's many a day I don't, you know. He, we bought a, um, a minibus uh, the other week that we thought we were going to turn into an RV. And we parked it in our parking lot. And I think within two days, he had broken two windows out of it. And then, you know, the next day, he wants a drink. And, um, anyway. That might not be the, the kind of person you run into, or just anyone runs into. There's, it's anywhere and everywhere. Um, but I guess what's, what can be hard is viewing them as, well, as Jesus. Um,
What should motivate, uh, what's our motivation to minister? Um, we, we often think of, and I, there's sort of two categories of, of ministering to others. There's, there's ministering to people like your fellow brethren or people in the church. And then there's ministering to um, maybe those who you're trying to reach out to. Uh, to share the gospel with. Um, is that two different motivations as far as, like, what's your thought? Um, what should motivate us to minister to others? Anyone else? What does the word motivate? Uh, like inspire you or cause you to do it. So you're proposing that we minister to others to be the greatest? <laughs> no, but I, I know what you. I, I ran across that verse as well, and that's a that's a good one. Anyone else? I th I think often we think of ministering. I had to think about um, like we often think of it as tying directly to evangelism. Um, and I was trying to decide if that's actually, in other words, we, we tend to think that we have a hard time giving someone a lot, sacrificing a lot for them unless, like we might say we're not getting anything, but if they're not showing any interest in following God, then, or, we, and I, I was, as I studied this, I had to wonder if that actually, how much those two actually have to go together. In other words, if you're being motivated to minister to others because of your love for God, and your sympathy for others, and I think too, if we have a right perspective of ourselves and our Creator, like we're going to be compassionate to those who are less fortunate. Um, because if we're honest, me and you did very little to be where we are. I mean, you didn't choose what country you were born in or what town, I mean, what city you were born in, what family you were born in. And I have to think about it. A lot of, a lot of the people that I relate to, my neighbors, if I was born there, I, 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 don't, I wouldn't be any different. I, I don't think so. Um, because I, I grew up in the best of the best, and I, I struggled. Um, those times I took advantage of everything I grew up in. Um, and I'm not sure how to balance all that. But I think if we have a proper perspective of who we really are, we will be compassionate. Um, and, and from the beginning of time, even through the Old Testament, you'll notice that God asks the people with plenty 
to look out for the poor or to look out for the, um, and I think, I think regardless of, well, I, I don't know, what do you all think? Is there any, is it okay to minister to people just for the sake of um, helping them? Or should, in other words, do you give the beggar $10 so he can get a meal just to get a meal? Or do you give him $10 if, but make sure that there's a tract with it? And I'm not saying that's not, not okay, but I'm not sure if you're, you understand where I'm coming from. Do we need, do they need to do something to merit the, uh, our ministry? Follow the example of Jesus, then no. Yeah, and that's, I don't know, it's just something that I've thought about more as I, because it's really, especially when you work with something, somebody day to day, that's where it gets a little more, it gets pretty frustrating if, if they take it, they take it, and they take. Obviously, you have to be wise, and you have to follow the Spirit's leading. Um, there's going to be times when you, you, you shouldn't minister anymore to, to a certain person, I'm sure. Um, along with that, I had to, is ministering to help the giver or the receiver? Because often we think... It, it gets, um, <coughs> well, what are your thoughts? Both. Both. It's more to give so it leans one way a little bit. <laughs> no, I think you're right. I mean, I think I, we tend to get in the, the trap of thinking that we have what they need and so we're helping them. Um, and I think more often than not someone who sacrifices through ministry um, is getting blessed as much maybe more not in a selfish way but in a way um, once you start ministering to others you start realizing how good you have it, or how blessed you are, it might help combat materialism when you realize that when when all your resources aren't being used to gratify yourself. Um, there's that verse about the let him that steals steal no more, but um, rather let him labor, so he has what. Do you know the rest of that verse? To give to him that needeth, yeah. He's not supposed to labor so that he can. Um, and so I, th I think there's a lot of things that um, ministering does to the giver. And the other unique part about administering is sometimes in order to minister to someone, you actually need to let them give you something. Um, you can think about that. Uh, we're, we're not going to get into all of that, but... And this is another, probably, the... an either or question and so the answer is probably both of these but do you think of ministry when you think of ministry do you tend to think of it as a personal work or a collective work I 
and this goes for, we'll talk about this in evangelism as well probably, but um, what do you think? Personal. Yeah, and again, I think that's that's where um, there is a there's a place for um, pooling resources and. Um, doing things that you couldn't do by yourself. But I, I think, too, that... I guess I personally am concerned that in, in some of our conservative circles, well, in all of them, we're, we're pretty much about being efficient and results-driven, and, and we, we like our programs. Um, and I'm worried that some of those have become or are becoming a replacement for personal ministry. Um, I don't know how you... Yeah, what your thoughts are. I had to... How many... Have any of you read um, Under the Overpass? All right. A few of you. Um, that was the, the fellow that him and his friend went homeless for... Oh, I forget, three months maybe, maybe a little longer. Um, as an experiment, they were two Christian fellows just to see. They just, yeah, wanted to see what it was like, um, how people were treating them. And they, they specifically targeted churches. Um, it's an interesting, interesting story. Uh, and in there he talked, actually he was in Lebanon, I think it was last year, at a church talking, and I went to listen to him. And he talked about, and this is in the book too, there was a church that he went to, they, would, they, they went to all the programs, figured out where to get their food or whatever, and they usually if you went to a church, you could get some sort of help, or at least that's what they were hoping. And they went to this one church. They ended up, it was, I forget what state it was in. It was hot. And they were, um, they got, they might have slept in front of it overnight or got there early in the morning. No, I think they slept in the front overnight. I'm not sure. But anyway, in the morning, it was Saturday morning, I believe. It was during the week, anyway. Um, they noticed people were coming in and bringing lots of food into the church. And uh, they were getting all excited. And this guy comes and, and tells them they got they got to leave uh, they can't have they're having an event they can't have them laying there or whatever and so they argued with him a little bit um, because they were church people and they knew like what churches were supposed to be and so they kind of argued with him a little bit he got pretty heated and so they, they finally left um, they were pretty upset about missing their their breakfast then they purposely went back to that church on Sunday. And he says that when they sat down for the church service, they got there pretty early. And when it filled in, there was, I forget, a, a bench or two in front of them. There was nobody. And there was nobody on their bench. It was like a big circle. There was no one sitting around them. And um, after the service, this guy came. The last thing they expected, but this this same guy that chased them off came running over to them and he was um, yeah gave them gave them each a hug and was just he was just apologizing and he was um, getting emotional and uh, he's like hey I, I am so sorry he's like that that was not supposed to happen uh, that, I knew that they said oh they, they had said that they prayed the whole way home uh, that God would convict him, I think that's what it was. Anyway, he said, I, after you left, I, 
I realized that that he said you're not you're going to find this even uh, more surprising. But I'm actually the head of our homeless program, and he said uh, you came on the wrong day. Our homeless program's on Thursdays, and you came on Saturday. Um, and and I think sometimes we can even be a little bit that way too. Um, that sounds really extreme, and, and that that case is. Um, but um, that's that's what programs can can do to, to us sometimes. They, they sort of condition us to think of certain types of ministry as certain certain times of our life instead of it being a lifestyle. Um, maybe we could talk about some practical ways that you all can think of that we can minister or that someone ministered to you. This can be um, to people in, inside or outside your church community. Um, I know he said ministry, he, he, uh, he had kind of differentiated between ministry being someone who can give back. Um, when we recently had the twins, there was people who ministered to us within our church who we, we couldn't give back. I mean, it was <laughs> with the expenses we had um, with that whole thing um, and the time and so there was people who who stepped up and um, helped us out did yeah some of the things were just small but um, I, w I would consider that ministry and we we were part of the church but in, in many ways we couldn't pay them back um, whether it was someone just staying over the night or um, when you get back from the hospital and your refrigerator is filled. Anyway, anything you all can think of. Just, pra just any practical thing. Um, sometimes hearing other people say things that someone's done for you or whatever, it, it can help you. Sometimes you just don't think of things. There's things that are right in your face maybe that you could minister to and you, you just don't think about it. So can you think of any way that someone might have ministered to you or, or it could be something you did. It's, we're not gonna think you're arrogant if you share something you did for someone else. And it can be simple. Anyone else?
Good. Yeah, and even being um, something as simple as praying with someone um, can mean a lot. And uh, that's something that I've been trying to work on. I, as a child, I was not very outgoing. And um, it's kind of surprising that ministering is something that I enjoy now because it, it's, it's taken a lot of work to get there. Um, but, or even just listening to someone, I, I believe it was a Monday night. Um, yeah, it was Monday night. That was the night that my wife had sat at the hospital with, with the neighbor lady. And then I, that same day, um, I noticed that uh, when I stepped outside in the afternoon, the, the neighbor boy, I said, no, man, I guess, he's probably in his 30s, um, he was getting arrested a couple of houses up, and he was given the, it was quite a show, he gave him quite a run for their money, but um, he is, I don't know if he's bipolar or what, I, something, anyway, so then I, I knew his dad was, uh, yeah, he's been having a tough time. Um, his wife of 30 years left him this year, and his sons both have been arrested. And um, so when I left, when I got home from here, I, I just ran up to talk to him to see if he's okay. And I think I ended up getting home at 11 o'clock. I I tried to leave. I kept telling him I got to go home, and, and then finally he's like, "All right, I." I know I keep saying I'm going to let you go. This time you, this time you can actually go. He's like, um, just thanks for coming up or whatever. In the meantime, I found out that his house is on the, uh, to be sheriff sale because they haven't paid the taxes um, at the end of this month. And, you know, when you, when you listen to someone like that, you just realize that, yeah. Um, wow. Well, he felt blessed to be able to share um, and someone was caring about him. I was, I realized that I, yeah, I don't even know how to relate. <laughs> um, but just simply listening to someone, praying with someone. Um, yeah, maybe, maybe you thought of something else. surprised if you if you give if you give someone their your time what what that means to them I one we had to uh, at the children's ministry one time we had to call the an officer in to take care of a little situation someone got out of control and um, he talked to us for the officer talked to us for a while and and he said keep doing what you're doing he's like you wouldn't believe how many times I have to go out and take care of these boys. And he's like, they tell me about church. They tell me what you guys tell them. 
and what you teach them. He's like, you'd be surprised how many times I've heard about it. They're, they hear what you're talking. About. They hear what you're what you're telling them. Um, and so there's just you just never know the, what what impact you might be having. Anything else someone thought of? Well, there's, there's lots of things. And, um, and like I said, it's, it's one of those things. If it is a light, if it's something you get into quite a bit, um, there is the possibility of, of getting overwhelmed or burned out. And I just want to talk about real quickly, um, what are your thoughts on how you keep from burning out when ministering to others? How do you balance family life? Or I know that could be a huge topic, but just what are, what are some of the things that come to the top of your head? Ways you, maybe even ways you found worked or. Yeah, Any, anything related to that? Any words of wisdom? Yeah, I had to think of that too. Um, there was times that he he got away. He, he was in a in human flesh as well, and, and I believe he got weary as well of throngs of people. Um, I think it's important to notice what he did when he got away. Um, he didn't get away to. He, I sometimes I hear this. I just need some time for myself, and then they, you know, people go do whatever, you know, um, have some fun, which I'm not saying that's wrong to have some fun, but I think if you're getting burned out from ministry, I think it's important to notice that he went to spend time with God and to, to make sure that your time away is a, a positive refreshment, uh, spiritual refreshment of some sort. And sometimes the people found him and then he said, go away, I have, I'm taking time for myself, right? <laughs> what happened in that case when, the, when they found him again? Anyone? Remember the story? Well, he, he taught them anyway. And I, I think of that, I'm challenged by that sometimes. Yeah. Probably another thing I thought about is sometimes we, we get caught up in ministering thinking that we are the answer to people's problems or things like that and and that can burn you out um, I think we need to live a lifestyle of service um, in our in my case I try to include my family as much as possible try not to leave them to minister to someone um, it's not always possible but um, and try to remember that um, God, they, they, uh, God is the giver of our blessings, and um, it's not me who's fixing fixing their their problems. All right. Was there anyone else who had anything? Any related at all to the topic you wanted to, you were thinking of that you'd like to share before we close out? I don't want to cut anyone off. Right. 
yeah, be, uh, being open and honest and asking for prayer is definitely a, a huge help. Anything else? All right, well, I'd encourage you to, to heed the Spirit as you go throughout. Um, if you ask God for opportunity, it's amazing um, what opportunities He'll give you. Talk to the, the person crying in the parking lot. Ask them if you can pray with them at least. Um, maybe the... The lady who comes up a couple of dollars short at the grocery store. There might be. Um, there's just so many options that if you're open and heeding the spirit. Um, and, and don't argue with the spirit too long because usually the opportunities only last a few minutes. And it's always easier afterwards to think I really should have went back. Um, what I think of is, uh, this would probably be more in the evangelism category. I had a fellow who sat on the porch one night and talked to me, and uh, he, was, he was high. He was not. But I saw in the newspaper like the next day that, or a day or two later that um, he got hit on the road um, and killed just, it might have even been the night he talked to me. And, and I had to think about it, you know. I, was there something I should have said or could have said? Um, was I too ashamed for Christ? He was high, but maybe, maybe there's something I could have said. And um, we can't, we can't beat ourselves up for every single situation. But if we're open to the Spirit um, and ask God for opportunity and take them when they come, it, it will, it will bless you more than you could imagine. Because it's, it's only by God's grace and blessing that, that we are where we are. So um, let's be ready to share it and try to see people who, for who they really are. That way on Judgment Day, we can be part of the, the crowd who Jesus said, you know, you fed me, you gave me to drink. And we might not know where that was, but um, let's uh, take the opportunities when we can. All right, let's pray. Our Father in heaven, thank you for taking, giving us, uh, bringing us safely through another day. And uh, just thank you for the opportunity to um, gather and be able to fellowship and study your word in peace. Just pray that we would not take this for granted, but that we would use it to uh, the best of our ability while we have this opportunity. Just want to thank you again for um, your son and giving us a reason to live Lord we're not we don't know why you've necessarily placed us where you have but just pray that we would um, not take credit for that ourselves but that we would be ready to share our blessings and minister to those around us Lord we pray as we go throughout the rest of this week that you would give us opportunities to not only minister to you, for you, but to, sh to share the hope that you've given us to others and pray that we would be open and ready to, to do just that. Just pray that you would give us safety as we travel home again tonight. In Jesus' name, amen.